Well guys, we are back with another video for the 22WX. I do have a Perrin intake. So let's go ahead, get this unboxed and get this installed and let's get today's video underway. I don't know if you guys are excited as I am, but I am so excited for this intake because it's gonna help capture some of those nice turbo flutters, make some cool turbo noises, and kind of appeal to my inner boy racer. So if you guys like this type of content, hit the thumbs up. There's also a coupon inside the box. If you guys are looking to order yourself one, just type in save 15 when you check out, you get 15% off. But let's take a look at it. So you got the intake filter, you have a few hose clamps, and then this is the wrinkle black aluminum piping so this is going to mount right in and this does not work require any tuning so this is a strict plug and play you don't have to get your ecu or anything retuned or any type of map or anything done Perrin, according to them they spent quite a bit of time to make sure that this runs properly with the car so you're not going to run lean so you can take a look at that mass airflow sensor port and uh, that nice parent riding. Let's take a quick peek at the intake and then we'll look at the what comes in the instructions manual. Bring this thing outside so there's your intake and get a nice good look at it out here in the sun. And this is an oil filter so when it gets dirty you can wash it, re-oil it and reuse it which is nice. So it comes with a license plate cover which is cool. So I'll probably throw one of these on my car. I have one from before from the uh, charge pipe video. If you guys haven't seen that, give that a watch down below. But it comes with all your different mounting hardware. There's a different mounting bracket. I'm not sure if some of this is for the heat shield. It comes with a few stickers in the box too. And the instructions manual, which looks like it has pretty good pictures, which I've always liked. I'm a uh, picture type of guy. Always helps me kind of visualize everything. So let's uh, get in there. Let's start taking things apart. It's going to look something like that. And this is your inner cage, outer cage. So just make sure you read the instructions about wiping excess oil from the filter, which I already did. All right, guys, let's pop the hood and let's get this installed. So if you guys didn't see the video, I recently installed the Perrin charge pipe here. I'll uh, we'll have a link in the description down below as well as a tag up above. But we're going to go ahead and remove all the factory stuff. And according to Perrin, you can do everything from the top. You don't have to get underneath the car. So I'm going to go ahead and install it that way. Shouldn't take too long, maybe 20 minutes, I think. And uh, let's get to work. Before you guys start, since we're going to be working with the mass airflow sensor, disconnect your negative battery terminal just for good precaution. We just have a couple plastic clips here. And then just uh, lifts right up and out. I'm gonna use my Milwaukee to get a couple of these 10 mil bolts off on the side. Shout out to Milwaukee. If you guys don't have Milwaukee power tools, I'll put a link in the description. I highly recommend them. Make these type of jobs and installs a little faster, a little easier. I'm gonna use a gear wrench for this one, guys, on the front. Kind of a little hard to get to. It's tucked underneath here. And then on the mass airflow sensor, there's a little tab here. You can just use a little pick tool. So on the mass airflow harness, there's a little nub that's connecting it. You can just pop that out. I'm going to slide your intake tube off of this. Now your factory air box will just come up and out. So let's take a peek in the engine bay, guys. We just have to get this uh, intake hose off here. So for the warm drive, you're going to want an 8 mil you're going to put that down along the side here and you can twist that off easily 
And then for the bolt, you can get a 10 mil gear wrench just right on there. This will just come right out. I'm gonna give this a nice good pull. This will come up and out. So guys, here's a look at that. That's where the uh, bolt was going through there that you're trying to get to down there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the mass airflow sensor from the factory intake. And you can see that the arrow goes this way. That's the way that the air is flowing. So it was going down the stock intake snorkel and it's gonna be going down the parent intake. So we're gonna go ahead and face this mass airflow sensor this way. Okay, so to reattach this over here, you can see the thread pitch on these is different. They're machined. I'm just gonna use these two little screws that come in the hardware. Make sure when you guys are working on this mass airflow sensor that you don't touch anything to any of the sensor points. So just handle it by the top connection point. Uh, make sure your seal is on there, your O-ring seal, which it is. So this can just slip right down in here. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth to get it seated. Line up the holes. And then we will put our hardware in here. Now keep in mind guys that when you tighten this down, this housing is made out of aluminum. So get everything kind of started by hand. Make sure that it's threading so you're not going to get anything cross threaded and stripped out. And then just snug them down. You don't need to over tighten them. Perfect. So I wanted to get you guys a little bit of a look at the difference from the factory one to the aftermarket pairing. So with the factory air box in, this is your only air inlet to the turbo. So it's gotta go through here and then it's gonna come through this. This is still gonna be plugged in and diverting cold air into the engine. But you're gonna also have all this foam intake filter sucking in air all the way around, 360 degrees pretty much, versus that. Uh, coming down the pipe, another thing that I see is, we got like all these little round points on the inside of this thing. It probably cr would create some type of turbulence would be my guess. Uh, probably also disrupts the air when it comes back out and up, so you probably don't hear the flutters as much. Um, this is smooth all the way down, but let's go ahead and let's grab the brackets. Let's get the brackets mounted and then we'll drop this in. Okay guys, so you have a bracket that needs to be removed. There's a little 10 mil bolt. And it's just right against the uh, lower intake area down here. So this is gonna be your hardware to mount the intake pipe to the lower bracket. So you got your spacer, you got your M6 bolts and washers, and this is just comparison. So all the big hardware's for the other stuff. So I'm going to mount that up and then I'll show you what it looks like on the cell phone because there's no way I can fit my full frame camera down there. Okay guys, so we got a peek in here and we're going to go ahead and mount the top bracket. So you're going to have this bolt here and then this hardware here. And with a washer, this is going to slide there. So guys, we got the brackets on. I'll show you what those look like, but everything's secure. Hose clamp is tight. And if I could do this install again, I would highly recommend pulling the thing up on some ramps and drop the lower dust cover because it is a huge pain in the butt to install all these brackets because you're literally doing it blind. You can't see anything down here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me get my cell phone in there. Okay guys, so coming down here, you can see the upper bracket. So it basically connects up just right underneath the headlight. So you get your bracket here and I would attach it to the top here. And then once it's there, you can worry about attaching it to the 
uh, bottom bracket right here. So attach it on the top. And like I was telling you, it's really hard to get all those, those holes, like to get it in here. And then once you have that one in, you can go down below. So the lower one is right there. So once you have the top one in, you can get the lower one and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So from here guys, we can get the filter on and then we're gonna also have to cut this electrical tape back. So let's do that. It says here we gotta cut a small portion of the electrical tape to get a full extension from the MAF harness into the MAF sensor point on the intake. So I spent most of the time not being able to see the hole, which I mean, most of you guys probably can relate. I can never find the hole, not without my wife's help. And especially on this install, I was doing it all by finger touch and feel. And there was a lot of uh, profanity, a lot of uh, frustration. So pull them up on the ramps. It'll make the install much easier. There we go. Now that's going to give us the room to reach it down to the sensor. All right, so it's all in, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. The best part of the parent intake, guys, is light throttle acceleration. You can just hear that surge of air. sounds guys check it out it sounds freaking awesome I notice when you blip the throttle to you hear a little induction. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. If you haven't seen the Noble Titanium single exit exhaust install video, we got that video we did last week, as well as the STI wheels. And there's a ton of other WRX content on the channel. You guys, leave me some comments let, and let me know what you think down below if you guys like all the extra turbo sounds. So I think what I need to do now is decide whether I want to do a bigger top mount, a front mount, and then I want to do a J-pipe, some coilovers, and then do some type of tune on the car. And I've got tires coming for the uh, other wheels I have. I've got some race 
compound track tires. So that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. I'm super excited to have this installed. According to Perrin on their YouTube channel, they claim that this intake gives you an additional 10 to 20 horsepower. Does it add more power? Our intake is gonna give you an additional 10 to 20 horsepower and an additional 10 to 17 foot pounds of torque. And 10 to 17 pound feet of torque, which I can definitely feel the torque on the low end as soon as that turbo starts to kick in, having that extra, basically no restriction and that air being able to come into the turbo, you can feel that. And you can feel a little bit more on the top end, but I think it really needs a tune to really unlock that top end horsepower. So the last thing we're waiting on is actually the heat shield that's going to go around the intake. I'll throw a picture up on the screen. I ordered it, but it's on back order. So I'm waiting for that to come out of production to get it. And then we can install the original cold snorkel that comes from the front grill into it. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think and subscribe to the channel. Share the video with others. And uh, yeah, let's have fun building and modding our Subarus together. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.